So in today's notes, we're going to take a look at what it means for expressions to be equivalent. And then we're also going to take a look at some structure or patterns in some expressions with lesson six. So we are going to cover lesson five and lesson six today. So reading at the top of the page, so starting right here, it says the idea of equivalent expressions or equivalency is extremely important. It is the basis of many, if not most, of our algebraic manipulations. The definition of an equivalent expression is given below. So within this box, it states that two or more algebraic expressions are equivalent if they have the same value for every value of the substitution variable or variable. So what that means is no matter what values you plug in for x, but x could be y or z, the two expressions come out to be equal. And we're going to explore this in example or exercise one. So we have three expressions. The first one is five times the difference of x and three. The second one is five times x minus three. And then the other one is five times x minus 15. So when I plug in these three values, 7, 0, and 1, we're going to see that they come out to be the same value, okay? And whichever columns give us the same value means the expressions above are equivalent. So you can see the first one uh, I did already plug in the x. So in the next row, we need to plug in the 0 for x, and then we need to plug in the 1 for x. In doing the math now, following order of operations, we need to do the parentheses first, and we end up with 5 times 7 minus 3 is 4, which is 20. 0 minus 3 is a negative 3, and then 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. And in the bottom, 1 minus 3 is negative 2, so then 5 times negative 2 is a negative so those are our values we get when we substitute. In the next column, we're going to, for x, plug in again first the 7. So this is 5 times 7, then minus 3. I've already plugged in the 0 in that row. And then we've got 5 times 1 minus 3. So now with the order of operations, when we have multiplication and subtraction, we do the multiplication first. So 5 times 7 is 35, and 35 minus 3 is 32. The next one, 5 times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Lastly, 5 times 1 and 5 minus 3 is 2. The 32 does not match the 20. Okay, so these and the negative 3 doesn't match the negative 15, and 2 does not match negative 10. So these two expressions are not equivalent. Okay, so we need to do the math for the last column to see what we get for those values. I'm going to plug in 7 again. So we have 5 times 7 minus 15. Plug in 0, 5 times 0 minus 15, and then the 1 is already substituted. Okay, now to do the math, same multiplication and subtraction are two operations, so we're going to multiply first, as we have on the left, 5 times 7 is 35, 35 minus 15 is 20. Ooh, 20 matches 20. Maybe they're equivalent, so let's check here. 5 times 0, 0 is 0, 0 minus 15 is negative 15. Again, another match with that first column. And then 5 times 1 is 5. 5 minus 15 is negative 10, which is our third match. So therefore, we can say that this expression right here, the 5 times x minus 3, is equal to this expression here of 5x minus 15. And we should know that because in the notes from last class, if we distribute 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. So number two 
says which property, the commutative, associative, or distributive, justifies the equivalency we just discovered. And I had just stated that. So that's the distributive property. So in number three, which of the following expressions is equivalent to five times the sum of 2x and 1 minus 4? So let's start by using the distributive property. 5 times 2x is 10x. Keep the plus sign. 5 times 1 is 5. And then we're going to subtract 4. Now the only like terms there are the 5 minus 4. So I'm going to combine those. And we have 10x plus 1. So the correct answer is choice 3. And then it wants us to justify our answer by testing x equals 2. So what that means is we're going to take and plug in 2 in the original expression. So it's going to be 5 times 2 times 2 plus 1 minus 4. And then we're going to take and plug in 2 in our answer which was 10 times 2 plus 1. If we get the same thing, that justifies, so the justification is the math that backs up our claim, that the two expressions are equivalent. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses. So we have 2 times 2 plus 1. Well, within that, we have to multiply first. So we get 4 plus 1. So this ends up being 5 times 5 minus 4. 25 is 5 times 5, minus 4 is 21. Over here, multiplication before addition, 10 times 2 is 20, and 20 plus 1 is 21. It works out. That's great. Exercise number 4. Which of the following expressions is equivalent to that expression? Ooh, there's a lot going on there. You want to start by simplifying your numerator, and then we can divide by 2. So within that, we're going to have to distribute. So 4 times 3x is 12x. 4 times 1, keep your sign, is 4. Then minus 2, divide by 2. Within that, we can combine the 4 and the 2. So we get 12x plus 2 now over 2. So we want to split that up and take the 12x, divide that by 2, keep the sign, and divide that by 2. And we're going to use the distributive property and take half of each. And 12x divided by 2 is 6x plus 1. It's not one of our answers because I still have to subtract that 5. All I did was reduce that fraction. So now if I subtract 5 from that expression, we can combine the positive 1 and negative 5 to get 6x minus 4, which is choice 4. So the last exercise is just an example of an expression with a fair number of operations within it. Sometimes it is just as important to recognize even more simple equivalences. So which of the following expressions is equal to? 10x plus 15. So we're going to take each answer choice and distribute. Well, 2 times 8x is 16x. 2 times 3 is 26. That's not equal to 10x plus 15. I could have stopped after I distributed the first uh, 2 through the 8. So once I saw I had 16x and not 10x, I could have stopped. So 5 times 2 is 10x. That could be it. 5 times 5x is 25x. That's not it. And 10 times x is 10x. So I'm down to either choice 2 or 4. To finish that, the 5 times the 3, keep the plus sign in the middle, is 15. That matches. And then just to show this one is not, 10 times 5 is 50. So the correct answer choice is 2. To finish things up, we're going to factor. And it says that factoring is the process of writing an equivalent expression as purely the product of other expressions. Yes, yeah, so let's write that factor times factor equals product. Okay? 
Factoring is one of the most important skills that we want to reach fluency with. But for now, we will do some fairly easy factoring by simply applying the distributive property in reverse. So what we're going to do to go backwards is divide. Okay? The directions in exercise 6 say to factor each of the following expressions by writing an equivalent expression that is in the form of a product and we can check our work by using the distributive property. So if we're going to go backwards, we want to ask ourselves, what can we divide both 6 and 21 by? And not only what number, it needs to be the largest number. So both 6 and 21 are both divisible by 3. And 3 is the largest factor. It's also called the largest factor, a greatest common factor, the GCF. So now when we divide, 6 divided by 3 is 2, bring down the x, and then your sign in the middle, 21 over 3 is 7. But we need to write our answer as a product. So what multiplies to give us the 6x plus 21, we need to put that in parentheses and bring down the 3. And as I said, you can check by distributing. So we'll check this first one and we'll leave the others alone. Three times. 3 times 7 is 21. It checks out. Okay. What you can do to kind of help you with the factoring is ask yourself, does 6 go into 21? Does the smaller number go into the larger? It does not. So then if it doesn't, you have to look at another factor. Okay. So over here, does 2 go into 10? Absolutely. So we're going to divide them both by 2. And when you have this negative sign out in front, the leading term is negative, the leading of the first, we need to divide out that negative. So I'm just going to have it of bringing down that negative 2. And then now when I divide, negative 2 over 2 is a 1x. We don't write the 1, though. You can. It's not wrong. And then a positive 10 divided by negative 2 is a negative 5. Okay. Uh, does 14 go into 14? Yes, it does. So let's divide. And again, we'll bring out that greatest common factor. 14 divided by 14 is 1x or x. And then plus 14 over 14. We do want to write the 1 there. It's not 0. It doesn't cancel out. 14 divided by 14 is 1. All right, the last page is seeing structure for today. So reading at the top, it says, many times the techniques of algebra can seem like mindless moving of symbols from here to there without any obvious purpose. In the Common Core, we seek to challenge students by doing mindful manipulations. In other words, always have a reason for the manipulation you are doing. So within the box, it states that a mindful manipulation will be an algebraic technique applied with a purpose in mind. Even if, our, even if we are unsure, if the manipulation will result in success. In this sense, we want to give ourselves permission to do manipulations even if they fail to reach our purpose. The exercises in this lesson are about problem solving and using the properties we've learned in mindful ways to try to resolve problems that are like puzzles. But we will start with a problem that illustrates the idea. So in exercise one, it says consider the expressions 2x plus 1 and 6x plus 3. Find the value of both when x is 2. So we're going to plug in the 2. Remember, this was 2x plus 1. So we plugged in the 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. We plugged in the 2 here to the expression 6x plus 3. And we get 12 plus 3, which is 15. What is the ratio of the larger outcome to the smaller? Well, that would be... 5 to 15 or 5 over 15. Okay, that ratio, oops, my fault, is said larger to smaller. Pay close attention to that. The larger number is 15. So it would be 15 to 5 or 15 over 5, which is 3, or 3 to 1. Notice that 15 is 
5 times 3. Why did it turn out this way? Well, it turned out this way okay, because when you multiply 3 times 2x plus 1, you get 3 times 2x, 6x, 3 times 1, 3. Okay, what property can we use to justify that? That's the distributive property. So, okay, now for some problems that are a bit more challenging. You're going to be asked for the value of an expression without knowing the value of x. So let's do a warm up. It says the expression 3x plus 2 is equal to 7 for some value for x. And don't solve for it. Determine the values of each of the following expressions for the same value of x. Well, typically the expressions are multiples of the given. So if you look at what can we multiply the 3x plus 2 by in order to get the 6x plus 4, okay? Um, you can also take a look at factoring it if possible to find that multiplier, but I can just see that if I multiply the given expression, 3 by 2 we get 6, and 2 by 2 we get 4. So this 6x plus 4, as I said 2, the GCF would be 2. This is equal to 2 times 6 divided by 3, 3x plus 2. 6x plus 4 is the double of 3x plus 2. So since I know that this is equal to 7, because they told me, this is really 2 times 7, or 14. When you see that the first term doesn't change, okay, it's not a multiple of 3x plus 2. So you have to look at how you can break up the 5. Well, if we take the, uh, leave the 3x alone, and we break up the 5 so that it includes the 2, that's equal to 2 plus 3, okay? And grouping it back to 3x plus 2 using the associative property, we can then rewrite it as the 3x plus 2 plus 3. That's how we get the 5. And as we said, 3x plus 2 is equal to 7, 7 plus 3 is equal to 10. So these are just some mindful manipulations, okay? On the back side, I'm just going to pick a few, okay, because these are like puzzles. And I'm going to pick the ones that are multiples, okay? So 2x plus 5. When I double 2, we get 4. When we double 5, we get 10. So if we take, as we said, 4x plus 10 is equal to 2 of these, okay? So if 2x plus 5 is equal to 10, replace this with the 10, and this is multiplication. So 2 times 10 is 20. See if you can recognize another multiple. Another multiple would be D and E. So if we look at E, um, when you multiply the 2x plus 5 times 5, we get 10x plus 25. So this is really, since 2x plus 5 is 10, 5 times 10, this one is 50. And then D, it looks so close, okay? But the only thing that's different is instead of positives, they're negatives. So they must have multiplied the whole thing by negative 1. Because negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. So substituting in the 10 for that expression, 10 times negative 1 is negative 10. And then I'll do just one more. Because you can see in the, all the other ones, the 2 stayed the same. It didn't change. So let's say with this one, 
When it's not a multiple, all you do is add or subtract to the given expression. So to get 20, okay, and it's 2x plus 5, I must add 15. So then replacing this with 10, 10 plus 15 is 25. That actually wasn't so bad. So let's do another one. So the 2x stayed the same, so we must have taken 2x plus 5. And in order to get a 1, we must subtract 4. So replacing this with the 10, 10 minus 4 is 6. Man, I wasn't going to do so many of these, but it actually turns out to be pretty easy. So let's finish with that. So let's take, again, 2x plus 5. And to get a negative 5, we must subtract 10. So now this is replace the 2x plus 5 with 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. Man, I like these puzzles. Okay? So we're going to skip the challenge G, but we will try this multiple choice. It's also a bit more challenging, but let's give it a shot. It says, if the expression 3x minus 4 is equal to negative 3. So right away, I can replace this 3x minus 4 squared with negative 3 squared. And then I have the plus 6x plus 8. Well, look, the 3 changed to a 6 by multiplying by 2. And the negative 4 changed to the negative 8 by also multiplying by 2. So I can rewrite this 6x plus 8 as 2 times 3x minus 4, which gives me, again, the value, this is really 2 times negative 3. So let's bring down the negative 3 squared and do the math. So negative 3 squared, remember, is negative 3 times negative 3, or positive 9, plus 2 times negative 3 is a negative 6. And 9 plus a negative 6 is 3. So that's answer choice 3.